Hello, today I'm here to talk to you about bubbles. There are two types of bubbles in EVE. There are drag bubbles, these kind, which are lined behind the gate. The advantage of this is that when the target comes through, it shoots past the gate and into the bubble. And the other kind are called wall bubbles. These are bubbles in which sit between the gate and where the target is coming from. The advantage of these two bubbles is that each one has its in its own way will stop the target from getting through the gate and going to the other side but each one has its own advantages and disadvantages the advantage of the drag bubble is that it's very disorienting to an enemy target for example a drag bubble when you come through the, to get to the gate instead of stopping before or at the gate suddenly you find yourself shooting past the gate and into the drag bubble. This means that, and especially for newer players, they may struggle to be able to understand what in the world is going on, and even the more experienced players will immediately try and figure out where they're at. Most experienced players will be able to know exactly how to get out of this situation, but if you're fast enough, you can usually lock them down. One of the other advantages of the drag bubble is that while they're more difficult to set up, they're harder to avoid because of the fact that you have to come in from another, another source to avoid being captured by them. Wall bubbles, on the other hand, have some other unique advantages. The nice thing about wall bubbles, they're very easy to set up. Pretty much all you have to do is just warp between 50 to 100 kilometers before the gate and then anchor your bubble then and there. The big advantage of this is that, for a new player, they're pretty easy to set up. Another kind of unique advantage of wall bubbles is that they are very easy to trap enemy players in, because all you have to do is just simply let them warp to the gate. And the gate will pull them into, or when they warp to the gate, their residual residual velocity will actually usually cause them to float into the gate slight or into the bubble slightly. This is pretty advantageous because when they warp in, especially heavier ships will actually float into the bubble even further. You know they can do that with the drag bubble as well, but the main thing with this is that whereas a drag bubble, when they come in, they hit the edge of the shield, and they might float in, but all they have to do is burn back. In a wall bubble. When they come in, they hit the edge of the shield, and they float in. Well, they can't head towards the gate, because if they head towards the gate, they have to go through the rest of the bubble. It, so they either have to try to burn back out of the gate and go back which way they came, or they have to go through and try and burn to the gate. So wall bubbles have some unique advantages, but both of them are pretty effective in their own ways. It's pretty effective to use either or. You know, and usually it's also a good idea to use a combination of thereof, you know, in different parts of the system. So, and it really depends on what your experience is. Let's say that you're a target entering this system. Let's say, you know, we decide we're going to go to YI. So we warp to it, and this is how a wall bubble functions essentially. You know, your ship enters warp, and you will fly to the gate unsuspectingly because there's nobody in system but myself and you'll just warp along on your own and suddenly as soon as you start to approach the gate the wall bubble will sent, will snag you before you reach the gate there's some major advantages to this one of them is that with bigger ships you always end up having a little residual velocity that comes out after you get out of the area here and because of that in this case, I'm in a little interdictor, so there isn't a lot of leftover velocity. But in a lot of bigger ships, you would actually float into the bubble. This gives you a little extra time to point them, scram them, and everything else in order to be able to kill them. And this is a very good thing indeed. But of course, you have to be quick about it. One of the major disadvantages of the wall bubbles, as you can see, I'm right on the edge. So if I want to, all I have to do is warp out. I don't have, you know, or I'm right at the edge, so I can almost warp out immediately. And because of this, you have to be very quick in order to catch the target before they left out. In this case, you know, see, within a few seconds, I could have warped out, and the target would essentially be able to 
leave pretty quickly. So one of the disadvantages of the wall bubble is that you have to be very quick in getting your target locked down so that they don't have the opportunity to escape, especially if they're in a small ship. And because of this, these ships tend to be a little bit harder to catch. And, and this is basically around the rough distance that you want to set up a wall bubble. You, know, you would sit there, you would anchor it, and in this case I use an introductor bubble just because it's easier to set up. But in many cases you'd want to use a you know a anchored bubble because of the fact it doesn't take for very long. And in this case, of course, you want to mark warp drive out of your bubble because if you get caught and say an enemy fleet comes in, you know, you're pretty much short work. So always make sure that you're not in your bubble unless if you absolutely have to. This is also a good spot to put cans and such in order to ensure that you know if there's a cloaky you know you can decloak them as they land on the bubble and uh, in this case I had a little bit of NPC rats bugging me so you know I had to run pretty quickly but and the next segment here we'll, we'll talk about drag bubbles The best way I've found to set up a drag bubble is usually I warp about 10 kilometers before the gate. This gives me a good chance to try and really, uh, I usually just drop out warp and hit the throttle to full, the, the, or the ship's throttle to full. And this can serve as quite useful in some cases, because sometimes you'll line to the gate in such a perfect way in which, you know, you can just fly right past the gate. You don't have to worry about you know, about accidentally getting hit with, you know, actually running to the gate, like in this case I did. But really the main thing with a drag bubble is you want to get far enough out to where it's all about aligning essentially the two gates together. So in this case, generally what you're going to do is you're going to try to align this dot with this dot. And since I already have this, this gate area here set up already, I'll just tell my ship to approach location. But this, the idea is that you're trying to line these up so that essentially they're indistinguishable. And the advantage of this is, is when these are lined up, they suddenly become much harder to turn into, or what happens that essentially is that the enemy ship's velocity, that the line that it's following when it's in warp, is going to intersect your bubble. And so it means essentially, see right now, just because I, I preset this bookmark up, but you can tell that when you look at the, the icons, they're almost completely aligned. So the advantage of this is if I were to take this bubble and launch it and then anchor it, there's a very good chance that when this bubble becomes fully anchored, when somebody warps in from the other gate, they are going to go past the gate and into my bubble. And so, and since it's very disorienting, because most of the time, especially if you haven't encountered a drag bubble, you're expecting to land right on the gate here, or at least short of it. Say, if you're stupid and in 0.0, zero, zero you're autopiloting. However, in this case, most people are going to suddenly find themselves not only going past the gate, but behind it. And if they're in a bigger ship, they'll have residual velocity that will allow them to kind of float into the bubble a little bit so that they can't immediately warp back out. A smaller and faster ship will be able to likely sit around the edge of the bubble. And really their only recourse is to warp back in which the way they came. Because there's nothing to go forward, that's just empty space. And there's nothing you know, to go to the sides because that's pretty much empty space too. And if they try to go that way, most likely is you're going to be able to catch them before they can really do anything. So their major recourse is to try and come back the direction they came. So now I'll micro warp drive out of the bubble so that I can test this and make sure that A, it functions. That's one of the other things you want to do too, is to make sure that your bubbles actually function. If you don't, you might find yourself quite disappointed when your first target comes through and suddenly it just warps right to the gate and jumps through. That's always a pretty important aspect. Always test your things first, because you may you want to make sure that you got that alignment just right. Generally, it's not a hard concept once you figure out how to align things, but once you 
once you figure it out, it's actually relatively easy, especially in a small fast ship like an interdictor or interceptor or whatnot. And so it's a pretty easy job. And basically, see, in this case, let's say we just initially you know, jumped into the gate. We turn around, we go to warp, and soon our ship will engage warp and we'll start flying. And, of course, for the unsuspecting person, there's nobody in zero zero. I've heard of some teams actually waiting in the other system and having a scout in the system before. And what they do is they wait for you to enter the system previously, and then they time it so that once you enter warp, then they jump into the system to catch you. And see, this drag bubble works perfectly. You get pulled behind the gate and right into the bubble. And this is a perfect example of how a drag bubble is set up. And generally, I also recommend for you to use anchored bubbles if you're if there's very few of you, because you know a dictor bubble is not going to last for very long, and a heavy interdictor makes a pretty sexy target to a roaming gang or something. So you're best off using a smaller ship to uh, to set it up at least. Usually, a small you know, Tech 2 Warp Disruptor bubbles perfectly fine for this type of thing, but if you really badly want to be a, you know, a jerk, you can use a, a large Tech 2, and in many cases, if it's really, really big, it might intersect multiple lines, meaning that it doesn't matter which way they come from, they would get pulled in from a multitude of lines. And so this is the main way you make these two types of bubbles. Thanks for watching.